Take it easy, bro. Make good choices. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> Let's jump into this game. So you got your boy solo casting over here. Final destination. We got Ray fighting off against John Numbers. Palutena against Dingling. Now, uh, John was one of the players that actually ended up getting to grand finals pre the previous week of Xeno. Managed to narrowly getting second place, losing to Sinji. But now he's sitting here, loser's top eight. Loser of this getting, going home with a seventh place finish. Very drastic change. Doesn't want to be in the hot seat. But let alone he is here. And John is actually, he wanted to pick up Big Clean before the game even came out because he is a huge Splatoon 2 fan. But also he wants to play a good character. He knows what, he knows what he's doing. Okay, going for a roller just in case Ray wanted to land down a little bit sooner. We only got Utopian Ray out here rocking the Palutena. Catches the warp. I mean, very risky location of where to go with that warp. Yeah, I saw that roller coming a mile away from John. That first stock going to John. Getting caught by the laser. That's actually something he's going to have to respect. He cannot throw out grenades willy-nilly like that. The reflector is something that he's going to have to respect. Maybe not go for the overhand throws. Uh, Inkling can actually do either overhand throws or the underhand. Underhand being a little safer. They last a little longer. Been throwing it in front of you. Here we go. Trying to catch that neutral air with, from the uh, squid jump. Squid jump actually, uh, sorry, super jump. Super jump being a pretty safe tool in Inkling's arsenal for getting back onto the stage. Difficult to punish. I was going to charge some ink. Another thing that Numbers is going to have to do with Inkling that all players need to like start capitalizing on is their ink usage. So once they're below that yellow line, he can no longer use the nade. Just goes off super deep for that neutral air. Ray trying to go again for a yet another nair. Avoiding all these back airs. The second he catches him, caught, uh, mashing buttons. Able to mash out just in time. It's too low percent for that to actually be a true connect. But now he's starting to get into that up air, up throw percent. But he is out of ink. Pushes him off stage to build a, just a tiny amount of ink. Enough for the grenade. Now John is actually not even being too concerned with trying to get full ink. You know, he's not, he's not getting greedy with trying to refill his ink. Because when you go into that state to refill ink, you kind of expose yourself. You make yourself wide open for your opponent to come in and try to get a punish. So he, only likes, he likes to go halfway, because that's all you need to use the splat grenade. Going off super deep. He still has enough ink for one more. Catches him going for the roller. Neutral air sealing that to kill. But now, seeing at 150% of avoiding that roller. Now, at this point, Inkling can kind of struggle to get the kill when you're at when you, when you go beyond the up throw up air kill. Like, the only guaranteed kill that she could probably get is, like, off of the roller at this point, or get like a hard read with a smash attack. But now Ray's starting to approach like the super high percents where a back air will probably kill at this point. Okay, playing super safe, dash attacking, weaving, bobbing in and out, catches the parry, just forward tilts, pistol whips the crap out of him. Ray actually planting the bomb on the edge of the stage to force Ray to air dodge right through it. Okay. Trying to play with the toes a bit. See, that was just Ray dancing around John. Holds the shield. No punish afterwards. When you go for the shield on the roller, it gives you ample time. But the thing is, he, I think Ray was expecting John to mix him up with a jump. Whenever a uh, inkling hits your shield, right, you can either keep going with the roller or jump as a mix-up. So it turns into a 50-50 for the other opponent, trying to guess how to get that punish. And he guessed wrong. This is what I'm talking about. Like, inkling sometimes struggles to get the kill, finally getting it. Off of a GIMP, no less, at 218%. If he can't get that roller or the up throw up air during this open window, Inkling can struggle for that. But Inkling's so good at racking up damage to begin with that sometimes you can just kind of let the let, let the kill come naturally, you know? Okay, just going to spray some ink on him. Pummel the rapid jab from Inkling being a great tool for just spraying ink upon their foe. Lowering the defense up to a maximum of 1.5 times. Okay. Does an empty hop to get right behind him and connect that grab. We got trades for days. But the reflect actually kind of going through the splat roll. That was a weird exchange. 113%. Things are looking pretty bleak for Ray. Reflects the grain right back at him. Yeah, at this point, Ray needs this grab. Forces the air dodge into a re-grab situation. Explosive flame to force his air dodge. A potential chance for his spike and... 
double SD. Huh. Yo, you dance there, Inkling. You got it. Let's watch that in instant glorious replay. So that was just a... Uh, a bunch of spaghetti. My man ordered pasta and just dropped everything all over the ground, man. Smacked that out of the server's hands. So what happened was that Ray was trying to scare John into not recovering super soon. So John actually got went a little bit too low, a little bit underneath FD, so he got caught on the uh, very edge of the stage. But the same thing happened for Ray, where he used a B warp, but was holding the incorrect direction, so he missed the ledge. They both ended up just dying. John was the one that had two stocks, so he was the one that ended up living. Got some control changes going on here. This could be a potential character swap for Ray. I know he has an Olimar up his sleeve. Olimar being a great character in this game compared to Smash 4. Um, not not say Olimar was a bad character in Smash 4 per se, but definitely way better. Like kind of going back to his brawl roots. Alamar it is. Not Alf, mind you. Going back to Final Destination, no platforms allowed. Very interesting song choice. So space, step three. How does Alamar even see with the, all that ink on his helmet? I'd be mad. All right, so Alamar is uh, going to be kind of a mixture character, right? Because he has the ability to have five different Pikmin. To choose from but only three out at once right you got the red blue yellow purple and white all having different types of attributes for instance the blue one allows you to uh knock your opponent farther away with grabs so if you manage to connect a grab with the blue you got, you got to be on the lookout the arrow is always going to be around the uh, pikmin that's going to be used next so that's going to be something that john's going to have to be mindful of and just take away the first stock seems to be all of our might be the uh choice of uh Choice of the champions for him. John definitely has a lot of Palutena matchup experience playing against uh, Fiending with Jen in the past, but I, I don't know about his Olimar matchup experience. It's definitely showing up here. And we're just going to jump to avoid the splatter shot. Splatter shot, good job. Good tool for that. That, that blue inkling. White, sorry, that was a white. So the white inkling is like phenomenal at just dealing damage on you once it's just like wailing on you. So you got to get that off ASAP. And John was too preoccupied with the splatter shot. Trying to get a huge root with that forward smash, just in case John got recovered a little bit too overhead. One of the spike, numbers delaying his recovery, not being predictable with the super jump. So it kind of mixes up the timing when Ray can go off and go for a spike. It's always a guessing game like that. Here we go. Again, has him off stage, saving his jump. You notice that John's also using like the roller off stage and just try to like give him some more like distance as well as allow him to like mix up how many jumps he actually has. Okay, while that ink is on the floor, it does decrease the movement speed of the opponent. So that's something uh, Ray's gonna have to keep in mind. Forward air forcing the air dodge. No back air coming out. I mean, that, at that point, Olimar had all three Pikmin and whenever he goes for the winged Pikmin up B, his uh, recovery move, he get he doesn't get as much distance, and so it's very predictable and very easy pickings for John just to land that easy up, up smash. But now he's sitting at 173%, literally just like a sneeze away from dying. He's got a purple Pikmin, purple, pick, purple Pikmin, one of the uh, heavyweights of the group. Very strong tool for like either just throwing at him as like a normal hit or just like a strong back air. He's still playing safe, He's not forcing the kill, not pressing the issue, but just letting the kill come naturally. Oh, what an exchange we just had. Try, trying to find his way back down to the ground through a lot of his Pikmin, but still has the one that matters, purple. Forward air coming out, taking away that second stock. Ray, one stock away from make, taking this to a game three set. Double purple, the legends foretold. When you have two purples and one blue, that's when you're at peak point status. White can also still be good. You know, you just use that side B to get on there, but the thing is, as long as John's holding shield, the Pikmin cannot latch onto him. But there it goes. Already doing a ton of damage in that process alone. 
Forward throw, just shooting him in the head with the pistol. Getting the grab. Big damage out here. Gets rolled. That's going to be an up smash. And a death to boot. Almar saw the flash, his life flash before his eyes. Again. Just waiting for John to make the first move. Doesn't want to get too preemptive. Too antsy with trying to go for a big read on the ledge get up. He's got a white. Throws it right above her head. Good dash dancing usage coming out from John, avoiding the white Pikmin. Just going to try to spray. Was that hitting a Pikmin? Because that was definitely ending a little bit too soon. Okay, purple again. Purple is the one that has knockback on the side B, the Pikmin throw. Okay, Ray playing safe. Doing a lot of empty hops. So he doesn't have landing lag afterwards. Oh, John might have an opening. Oh, goes off stage. Punishes the dash attack. At this point, Ray could be looking for a grab. Oh, forward smash. Got the red ready to go. He wants the blue, I think. Goes for the forward smash raw. Ray taking away game number two from John Numbers. Yeah, rack up those coins. Yo, go make sure, uh, go buy some music, John. Go into the shop, spend your coins, spend your Chuck E. Cheese coins. Need some more music on these stages. Of course, John. Counterpicking with Splatoon music. By the way, guys, he was actually playing Splatoon 2 in the background while waiting for his next set to practice. Facts. John's one of those players, uh, for those that don't know, he's a Nintendo World Champion X. From uh, 2015, was a runner-up in 2017. As well, loves, 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 loves Nintendo games. So whenever he comes to Xeno, he always brings a Switch. Not to play Smash, mind you, but to play other games like Mario Party and Splatoon 2. One time he even played ARMS. But here we go. We got Judd and Judd Jr. in the background having a dance-off. Was jumping to the final game of this set. Loser going home with a seventh place finish as we enter the Battlefield version of Inkopolis. Okay, he had to throw his Pikmin away in order to gain the necessary height. John capitalizing on it with just getting some free damage on him. There was no way he was going to be able to spike him or get any sort of kill off there, but he just wanted to go off deep to get some damage racked up. Trying to go for a call out. You notice he goes for that forward smash because he thought that Ray was going to try to like approach with an aggressive aerial. Ink all over the ground. You know, John, it looked like John was going a little bit deep off there, but he can actually afford to with Inkling because Super Jump covers a lot of distance. This is a pretty safe move. Okay, Ray going to camp those platforms a bit to avoid any uh, splat grenade throws. He's out of ink, though, so he's not able to use any grenades. This is when Ray needs to press the issue. Get in his face and start racking up damage before John recovers practically a full tank. I mean, went from E to F in a heartbeat. Play forward smash. Catches the two frame. Again, now we see John trying to mix up his recovery. Opting to recover high that time. Ray calling him out again, getting two forward smashes. Oh, he's got to avoid that ink. Wants to steer clear of the defense down ink debuff as much as possible. Those uh, numbers doing a. <laughs> it looked like an up air combo, uh, up throw up air combo on the yellow Pikmin. Rolling through, completely wide open for that uh, forward air. To, and that white Pikmin tacked on like 20 damage or something. Honestly, it's probably like 10 or 15. Again, the thing is, Olimar isn't really the most aggressive character. So, like, whenever John does back off like that to uh, refuel his uh, tank, it, Ray's not going to get as aggressive because Olimar loves playing from the back line. Like, Olimar's entire objective is to just keep the opponent out by throwing, using, making his soldiers do his work for him. It's very rare that you'll see an Olimar go in there and just start, like, throwing punches. Throwing fisticuffs. He's got the blue ready to go, looking for a grab, potentially. The thing is, that's, like, the obvious pick. So if John knows that he has the blue ready to go, 
grab is something that's gonna he's gonna have to be hyper aware of and not just be holding up shield willy nilly. Goes up the grenade. Good shield pressure coming out, can force a tick throw, but gets the grab with the blue Pikmin as he explodes from that up throw. He gonna be able to up air right through that white Pikmin. Setting him flying at 144%, a potential edge guard for John. Not gonna happen just yet. Going off super deep, ended up hitting the Pikmin, but not Olimar himself. Got a little bit of distance off of the wing Pikmin. No tech. Might have been hit too hard. Uh, there is a thing in the game where if you get hit way too hard, you go you go way too fast, you can no longer tech the wall. So sometimes it's better to hold down so it decreases the speed so you're able to actually go for the tech. Or at least make it a little bit easier on yourself to time the tech. That's the uh, LI coming into work. Okay, got the... Uh, has a yellow, has a purple ready to go for some damage. At this point, he doesn't want to really be saving too many Pikmin. Just wants to kind of go with the flow of whichever he has. He definitely wants at least a purple and a blue in his arsenal. Blue just being a really good uh, grab pickup. Okay, throwing his Pikmin so he can easily mix up his recovery with the winged one. It's caught by the forward air. Oh, John hungry for the hunt. He just goes for the simple back air out of shield. Another forward smash, hitting him off. Venom is sitting at 120%. Gets another forward smash, has him off stage. Not enough to get the kill just yet. The high blast ends the battlefield being slightly bigger than Final Destination. Down to those, like a little break dance move for himself. Gets the back here, takes the red Pikmin, and takes away Ray's second stock. Ray on his possible life stock here. Can all of our prevail? At this point, John's gonna be looking for a lot of aerials. England has some very strong aerials to work with. Pushes him off stage, doesn't want to get too antsy. Even though he's at super high percent, he could probably afford to get a little greedy because it's not the worst thing in the world. Doesn't want to risk it all. Wants to play it safe instead, and he's playing incredibly safe. Only committing to like the tilt scenarios. Oh, as I said, though, just a raw F smash from Ray, putting John into his final stock as well. Forward smash off of the splat roller. Not enough to get the kill just yet. We saw sparks flying, but Ray DIing like a king. Oh, forward air. That's going to be it. John numbers coming in clutch with that ending. With a JV2 stock, John's going to move on to loser's quarters. Utopian Ray going off with a modest 7th place finish. So I just got word that uh, John Numbers versus Sinji is happening. Not on Grand Finals, mind you, but in Loser's Quarters.